Welcome to the Banyan Edge Podcast. Here's your host, Charles Sizemore. Welcome. I'm your host, Charles Sizemore. And today we are continuing our conversation on artificial intelligence, AI. Now, I would say that all technology goes through different phases. The first phase is what I would call the novelty toy phase, and we've all been there. I remember in high school when I took my first coding class, I programmed the computer to repeat my name a thousand times for absolutely no good reason, but it was like, hey, cool, I can do this. You know, this works. And then I then figured out more practical, practical uses for the technology. But it's always like that. The internet was the same way. All new technology starts out as a all shucks, that's really cool thing to actually being a practical tool. And so today we're going to talk about how AI is, is, we're starting to get there in AI. We're going to look at some very practical ways that AI will change our lives and make them better. And so to help me with that, I have brought on Miss Amber Lancaster. Oh, thank you for having me. Glad to be here today, Charles. <laughs> now, I understand you've been quite busy. You told me you recently attended that uh, Bloomberg had a, uh, a virtual summit that was uh, just all things technology and it had some rather heavy hitters on the list, including drumroll, the CEO and co-founder of OpenAI, which is, of course, the maker of chat gpt yeah so i'm sure you you have all sorts of insights that you uh, you gleaned from the conference oh there's so many i can tell you charles if you weren't excited about ai or at least a, a tad bit interested you were after attending this tech conference titled Tech's turning point and if it's okay i like to share my screen just so i can show some of the highlights that i learned while attending this and as Please a do. bloomberg sure as a bloomberg user you have to just preface that um, I signed up to attend. You're, you're our resident Bloomberg nerd. You're the only one on staff that actually knows how to use the terminal. So um, th- thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. My <laughs> pleasure. So I, I signed up to attend this conference a couple months ago, and I can tell you that I learned so much. Then I'd like to just share a few of those salient points with your viewers for today. So just as you mentioned, Sam Altman, if you can see my screen, Charles, just let me know. I can. Um, yes, he was the founder and CEO of OpenAI and Adam Salipsky, CEO of Amazon Web Services, and Brian Chesky, of co-founder and CEO of Airbnb, were all in attendance. And it was like a fireside chat. And it and they they had various moderators and it gleaned so much uh, information regarding their perspectives on AI. So I thought I'd start with just a couple of points, but and by um, Mr. Slipsky, Adam from AWS. So per AWS, Adam Slipsky, he said, it's still a very early in the AI boom, Charles. We're just at the beginning stages, the tip of the iceberg here. We're at that toy stage that I mentioned. <laughs> exactly. We're a little bit beyond that. <laughs> we're, we're a little bit beyond it, but hey, the, the prospects of what we can see coming from, out of AI is just phenomenal. So. First thing we want to talk about is how Mr. Zalewski said a generative AI, which is uh, an AI that is just incredibly explosive and transformative right now, this type of tech, and it's dependent on the cloud to be successful. Now, Bloomberg Intelligence, I pulled this chart off Bloomberg, and it's also featured in the conference, and it projects generative AI's revenue out to 2032. Now, it's... uh, projected to go from 67 billion to 200 I'm sorry to 1.3 trillion by 2032 and what's phenomenal last about last time I checked a trillion dollars was still a big number it's still a big number even in today's trillion dollar world of trillion dollar market cap companies isn't it it's still a huge number to behold and to think that we are here at 67 billion so there's there's so much more uh, potential that we can see going forward Now, regarding generative AI, I I just want to start with the following. Now, per Selevsky, he noted the following. The massive amount of compute needed for generative AI will happen predominantly in the cloud. We know how everything's in the cloud nowadays. So companies will want to view generative AI as part of an entire data strategy and data platform in AWS. Uh, was founded to democratize IT, and now it will aim to democratize uh, generative AI. Uh, Slivsky sees a massive runway ahead that generative AI will be the next massive increase in workloads moving to the cloud 
And Amazon Web Services uh, sees this as a great opportunity as only, get this, Charles, 10% of IT tech has moved to the cloud. So just the beginning stages of that as it's well. It's still that low. Wow. Yeah, I wouldn't, this is that, like, as much as we've been talking about the cloud for, for years, I actually thought mm -hmm. it was much higher than that by now. I know I did too. So I was very surprised at that number. And so there's just a massive runway ahead for applications to move to the cloud. And he states that, well, we can't put the genie back in the bottle uh, that generative AI is going to happen. So we have to fasten our seatbelts for that one. Now, yeah, it's like, like unlearning how to make fire. Uh, good, good, good luck with that. I know, can't, if once it's out, it's, it's there. Now, Brian Chesky, everyone would know, he's the co-founder and CEO of Airbnb. And during uh, Brian Chesky's interview, he stated that AI will be embedded in everything we do and that Airbnb will be using AI from a personalization standpoint. Now, so you thought companies knew a lot about you. Now, wait till the AI gets into the Just picture. <laughs> So he stated that Airbnb customers will have access to the ultimate AI concierge. So instead of Airbnb asking, where are you going on your trip? Or where, where, uh, when do you want to leave on your trip? With the help of AI, they will ask, who are you? What do you want to do today, tomorrow, next year with your life? Like really probing questions. So the better they can understand uh, their customers at Airbnb, the more they can become uh, their ultimate AI concierge. Now, uh, Mr. Chesky said that he lived through an internet going global, mobile, and cloud, and that AI feels like the global expansion of the internet and the 2000 cycle combined. Uh, he's shared that some say that this is the biggest tech wave since the industrial revolution. So we already know that could be happening and a massive platform. By, by the way, normally yeah. that would sound like hyperbole, but I, I'm, I think he's very serious and I tend to agree with him. Yeah, don't you agree? I, I completely agree with him. And he, he lastly stated a platform shift of all platform shifts. That's what's happening. So Airbnb's opportunity is to build one of the definitive AI uh, interface layers that will be built around personalization. And most importantly, he, he wants to keep AI, Charles, in perspective, that AI shouldn't be your main friend. We have to keep that in mind. So personal, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so it's not going to be your drinking buddy, right? No, no, not going to be your drinking or your, or your spouse or what have you. I think someone married an AI person. Anyway, personal. <laughs> Personal human relationships are, quote, the secret to happiness. And he also noted that AI is moving too fast right now and just wants to make sure that people, we the people, can keep up with it and that AI ultimately will create more jobs than it will destroy. So he, at least he, he, he added- and people are caveats. concerned about that. So I think it's nice that he addressed that because mm -hmm. there is this perception. I and mean, this happened in the Industrial Revolution where people had this fear that my job is going to disappear because of AI. Yes. A lot of jobs did disappear in the Industrial Revolution, but then they were replaced with new jobs. So that's, mm -hmm. uh, it, that's, that's the parallel. <laughs> That's an excellent parallel. And that's the industrial revolution was, I heard during the conference, a superpower of, of our body, like building things, manufacturing, and the AI revolution will be the superpower of our minds. So that's I where like we're that. headed. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I'd like to um, note that, um, well, people just know that uh, with AI on the forefront, now is just a great time to really think about being invested in it. And I believe that this creates one of one of a kind of investing experiences, Charles. And the AI revolution that we're seeing today is just the tip of the iceberg, which is why, shameless plug, Charles, tomorrow, Tuesday, June 27th at 11 a.m. Eastern time, my colleague Ian King is going live with his most profound broadcast of 2023, the American AI Wealth Summit. Um, he'll be exploring exactly what's happening in the world of AI, and more importantly, the number one investment that he believes could store 2,200% within the next five years. No, everyone is totally free for you to attend. And all you have to do is RSVP in the link provided in the email for today's video that I'm doing here with Charles. Excellent. I plan to attend myself. And I know Ian's going to have quite a bit to say on this. He's been, he's been preparing for this for a long time. This is one of his passions. So this is, this will be a good one. It will be a good one. When we go over and for his customers, we'll go over his core themes. 
And artificial intelligence is definitely a core theme. So this is right in his purview, his alleyway. So it's good to see him doing this. Absolutely. Now, our theme today is how AI will change our lives, how it will revolutionize our lives. And I know that you have some opinions on that yourself. Yes, I do. Would you care to share them? Of course. So Charles, I spend a lot of time researching just for our strategic fortune services and, and all the premium services. And I'm always coming across great nuggets of information. So I thought I'd share three breakthroughs that I think will improve and affect our lives today and going forward. So I'll share my screen one more time so you can follow along. I prepared a couple of slides for everyone. So the first slide is about AI medical breakthroughs. And it's dealing with the following. Uh, the National Health Services, which in the NHS in the UK, is actually set to use AI to analyze x-rays and speed up cancer diagnosis. So I, when I thought about this, Charles, I'm like, OK, will the AI work in tandem with radiologists, or will this be done separately? But either way, uh, the NHS just believes this is the way to go in helping to diagnose. Um, well, no, but but think yeah. about it. You know, yeah. like when a radiologist looks at look, looks at look, looks at X-ray scans, mm -hmm. they may be tired that day. They, their mm -hmm. eyes may be blurry. They may have may have had too much to drink the night before. I mean, I, like the, humans make mistakes, yeah. and so having AI help the the, the radiologist uh, make a diagnosis there that's huge like that that will very likely save lives i like save i mean I don't, I don't know if it's thousands or millions or what but it, it, it that that's that's a major breakthrough it's a major breakthrough in my mind i'm thinking they'll work in tandem as a help a help mate to radiologists because radiologists are so imperative for our well-being and detection of early disease of disease so i'm hoping they work yeah, together a real second set of eyes yes exactly so, so far, more than 20 NHS sites have already started deploying this technology with, quote, results suggesting it could be more than 40 times, 40 times more accurate than traditional methods in less than 30 seconds. We're down to seconds now. Uh, health officials said that the deployment of AI tools for lung disease could speed up diagnosis and improve patient outcomes. Now, Catching it early. Catching it early. And it's not just for x-rays for different types of, of lung cancers, et cetera, but they're also trying to use it for strokes. Um, they found that AI has so far helped in, in, for NHS uh, medics uh, quickly interpret brain scans, which meant that average patients could start treatment around one hour sooner and has tripled the number of patients who have recovered and no i mean when you have a stroke every second matters like i, I what the, that early treatment can make the difference between making a recovery and not so that's that's huge it's so huge always remember fast i'm not going to repeat what fast means but that's so important when a stroke is happening sure yep and so number three is regarding, I'm sorry, number two is regarding the agriculture AI breakthrough. So what's happening here is researchers at Texas A&M, shout out to Texas for you, Charles. My and, sister is an Aggie, so, uh, okay. so, so there you go. There you go, small world. So Texas A&M and Iowa State University have developed a new disease detection sensor chip that can help late light disease pathogens and potatoes and tomatoes, as well as many other diseases with um, 10 times the sensitivity of currently available methods. So I think that's just fantastic. They have an example of how the model works here, but results from the new sensor are available in about 30 minutes. And the research scientists state that they will also work to quote, improve the specificity of detections and establish quantitative detection by integrating AI and CRISPR gene editing uh, type technologies. So their goal, Charles, is to achieve viable product and broad adoption in plant, animal, and human health point of care applications. And it's funny. Most people imagine farming as a very low tech kind of simple profession that hasn't changed much in the last fifteen thousand years. Right. But it that it, it's it's not. It's it's high tech, and this is this is huge because I, I know recently there was some disease that ravaged the 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 banana crop, like the main mm. banana uh, oh, reed yes. that. that 
and, and banana prices went through the roof a few years ago. Mm -hmm. If you want to go back in history, the Irish potato, there's a lot of people that look like me in the United States because of the Irish potato famine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, migration, <laughs> it's true. So it's, it, it, you know, that was a couple million people died mm -hmm. in, in Ireland from that, I think. So yeah. this is, this, this prevents that next one from happening. Like this is, this is something that, that, that will ultimately save potentially millions of lives. So mm -hmm. that's, that's huge. It's huge. I tell you, everything is huge coming out of the AI world. So I'd like to also share number three, which deals with something that what I love, guys, it's, it's cars and automotive sector. So, Charles, have you heard of a company named Mullen Automotive? I have not. Yeah, so I'm, that was kind of new to me as well. And I, I think I know a lot about cars, but this was new and I thought I'd share. So in the automotive breakthrough news, Mullen Automotive, which is a publicly traded, it's on the stock exchange, um, Amer American automotive and EV manufactured, headquartered in Brea, California, has launched an AI powered persona vehicle tech across their EV lineups. And per the company's press release, persona has advanced facial recognition technology and bridges the gap between driver and vehicle by personalizing the over all vehicle experience. Now, Persona huh. is an advanced interactive artificial intelligence camera as well. They mentioned sensor, video monitoring, et cetera. And it uses our face, obviously, to help unlock and lock vehicles, which is kind of cool. And it's completely personalized to what we want in an overall vehicle experience. And what I was also reading that in addition to opening and, and closing our car, the vehicle and customizing it, Initial persona functionality will also include a security fence around the vehicle and pet and occupant uh, safe mode, uh, as well as advanced charging and AI powered emergency response. So I think that's imperative. What do so you I say? wonder, so that, what does that mean? Like if someone forgets and they leave their dog or their, their baby in, in yeah. a hot vehicle, it'll just automatically roll the windows down? I, I don't know about that. I hope it does, but I just know at least it will alert the person leaving the vehicle that you have left someone, a loved one or, or, or a family, a pet family member in the car and don't and go back and let, get them out so they can survive. Or they so. cook. Yeah. The it's uh wow. That's I'm, 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 it's like that, that seems so it's, I'm almost surprised. No one's thought of that already. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm, I was wondering, I have to research. I'm thinking there's probably, maybe Tesla may probably have something like this. I'm not sure. Don't hold me to it. But I just thought this was phenomenal. And then if Mullen can do it, I'm sure other automakers will soon uh, follow suit. This is definitely a quantum leap from my current tech setup, which consists of me screaming at Siri to change the song. So, um, you know, <laughs> we're yeah. clearly coming a long way faster. Really, really fast and apparently a long way. So with, I was thinking, so what to do with all of this type of information? It's really a lot to consider. Well, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> oh, so yeah. this is a financial podcast. We want to know how to make money on all this. Of course. So, okay. I'm going to just, when, my last screen for today, I'm going to share, I just took it off Bloomberg. So a way to invest in the future of AI advances on really the overreaching scale. So one actual ETF that you can consider buying, one I've been recommending for since, I remember, I think beginning of the year or so, is the, or most times, the Global X Robotics and the AI Artificial Intelligence ETF, that ticker is BOTZ or BOTS. Now, wow. this, yes, this exchange traded fund actually seeks to track the performance of the index global robotics and artificial intelligence thematic index, which is the ticker here. There's two tickers in this comparative returns chart. And of course, <laughs> last but not least, I'm going to say it again, Ian's American AI Wealth Summit debuting tomorrow at 11 a.m., where he'll talk about what he feels is the number one investment that he believes could reach 22 to 100% within five years is another way to invest in the AI trend. That's what Ian does best. He takes that macro trend and he boils it down to actual investable ideas. So I, I strongly recommend everybody attend this. It is free and it is something that will potentially be wildly profitable to you over the next several years. Yes. So highly, highly valuable. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, that's all I have for my spiel for today. <laughs> Well, Amber, thanks for having. Th th thanks for thanks for being on. It's always a pleasure. You always have 
all sorts of uh, good quirky stuff to share with us that we really just don't get elsewhere. So, <laughs> oh, I'm glad to to be that conduit. <laughs> Well, th thank you for making uh, complex tech stuff understandable for the layman here. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure, Charles. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Always. I would love to have you on again soon. Of course. Looking forward to it. And on that note, I would recommend again to all of our viewers, please do uh, ch check in on, on Ian's summit. This is something that will potentially change your life. This is really one of the biggest, biggest events we've had uh, well, early in recent memory. So this is something I very, very highly recommend. And until then, go out and make yourself some money. <laughs>